Okay, this is um, this is video number two of my uh, brand new Litman 3M electronic stethoscope model 3100. Uh, the previous video that I just made a minute ago um, talks everything about the packaging, about um, the English section of the manual including battery and anything you can think of that's in these pages. Before I go into this, let me talk about um, the final pages of the English section, which talks about um, de declarations. Let's see, declaration, electromagnetic emissions. The stethoscope is, this 3100 stethoscope is intended to use in the electromagnetic environment specified below. The customer should be assured that it is used in such an environment. So make sure you know what you're doing. It has compliances of group one and group B for electromagnetic environment. Um, let's see, I'm just gonna read across these lines here. Some of you don't care, some of you need to know this. Because if you're spending 400 bucks on a stethoscope, you want to make sure you know what you're doing and what you're buying. Let's see, RF emissions CISPR11, compliance group one. Guidance. Model 3100 stethoscope uses RF energy only for its internal function. Therefore, its RF emissions are very low and are not likely to cause any interference in nearby electronic equipment. Okay. Next. Emissions test RF emissions CI SPR11 Class B. And harmonic emissions IEC 61000-3-2. Uh, that one's not, not applicable. Uh, voltage fluctuation slash flicker emissions, IEC 61000-3-3, not applicable also, but there is a guidance for those last three I mentioned. Model 3100 is suitable for use in all establishments, including domestic establishments and those directly connected to the public law, uh, the public low voltage power supply network that supplies buildings used for domestic purposes. So you're good to go. Next page um, is regard is talks about the electromagnetic uh, immunity. The 3M stethoscope model 3100 is intended for use in the electromagnetic environment specified below. The customer or the user of model 3100 should assure that it is used in such an environment. Let's see. I'm going to read across again. Immunity test, electrostatic discharge (ESD). IEC 61000-4-2. The test level was an IEC 60601 test level of plus or minus 6 kV contact and plus or minus 8 kV air. Compliance level next to it says plus or minus 6 kV contact again and plus or minus 8 kV air again. The electromagnetic environment guidance. Floors should be wood, concrete, or ceramic tile. If floors are covered with a synthetic material like rubber, I'm guessing here rubber or carpet, um, the relative humidity should be at least 30%. And this is to ensure that no static electricity builds up on your feet. Because you know the drier the environment, the more static shocking you're going to get. The next line says um, electrical fast transient slash burst IEC 61000-4-4 the IEC 60601 test level was plus or minus 2 kilovolts for supply lines and plus or minus 1 kV for input output lines it says the compliance level is not applicable and there's no guidance um, stated here for that the next one is a surge immunity test. Surge IEC 61000-4-5. The IEC 60601 test level was plus or minus 1 kV differential mode and plus or minus 2 kV common mode. Compliance level not applicable and there's no guidance for that either. Next immunity test. Power frequency 50/60 Hz magnetic field. IEC 61000-4-8. The IEC 60601 test level is at 3A slash M. The compliance level next to it is 3 dash, excuse me, 3 
uh, a slash m as well. So these two are equal. And the guidance for this type of, of electromagnetic environment is the power frequency magnetic fields should be at levels characteristic of a typical location in a typical commercial magnetic field or hospital environment. So again, it's nothing to worry about, really. The final line, the final immunity test was a voltage dip, comma, short interruptions and voltage variations on power supply lines, IEC 61000-4-11. Okay, um, the compliance level is not applicable, and the test level they used was an IEC 60601 test level, and let me just tell you what their test levels were but there's no compliance level um, information or guidance required, but I'll tell you them anyway. Less than 5% UT, which seems to be greater than 95%, excuse me, greater than 95% dip in UT for 0 0.5 cycle. The next test level was a 40%, 40% UT, which is 60% dip in UT for 5 cycle. The next test level was 70%, 70% UT, which is 30% dip in UT for 25 cycle. And finally, the final IEC 60601 test level was less than 5% UT, again as the first, which is greater than 95% dip in UT, but instead of a 0 0.5 cycle, we have a 5 second cycle. And again, no compliance levels were applicable and no environmental guidelines for EM electromagnetic um, environments was indicated. Um, and then we have more continuations of these immunity tests. Let's see, um, this immunity test here has nothing, the test level is nothing, the plus level is nothing, but there is guidance. It says that um, portable and mobile RF communications equipment should be used no closer to any part of the model 3100 stethoscope, including cables, than the recommended separation distance calculated from the equation applicable to the frequency of the transmitter. Okay, um, so don't use this next to your cell phone. Don't have your cell phone next to it. Don't have other equipment next to it, like an EKG machine. Um, try not to have any other um, RF or um, RF equipment next to it. So if the person has a heart monitor on, um, the electrodes could possibly interfere with um, this equipment. Um, the the cables attached to the electrodes on our chest could interfere with the equipment, and the battery pack which is powering the um, wireless uh, heart monitor, which relays to the central nursing uh, station or cardiac um, monitoring location, may be put in LRF, which could confuse this guy here, which could cause it to have static when you're listening. It could put static on the line when you're listening. Um, it could cause a low frequency sound to sound deeper, it could cause all kinds of crazy stuff to happen. Similar how you shouldn't have electronics on the airplane because maybe maybe your um, PDA or cell phone um, will cause the airplane to crash. So the chances of that happening are slim, especially nowadays that we use different guidance technology to pilot airplanes than the past. And also um, this guy, see, I don't think um, is, going to be inter is going to receive interference too much from outside RF radio frequency sources or electromagnetic sources. But don't chance it. If you can, avoid it. Um, the next immunity test was a, uh, it says conducted RF IEC 61000-4-6. The IEC 60601 test level was 3 VRMS at 150 kilohertz, 280 megahertz. The compliance level was not applicable. The guidance was D equals 1 comma 2, check, a check symbol and the letter P. Again, D equals 1 comma 2, check, P. Um, let's see, the next immunity test was, a radiate, was radiated RF IEC 61000-4-3. 
And that test level was done at IEC 60601 at 3, V slash M at 80 megahertz to 2.5 gigahertz. Compliance level is the same, 3, V slash M at 80 megahertz to 2.5 gigahertz. Guidance, D equals 1 comma 2. Check P, 80 megahertz to 800 megahertz. And below that it says D equals 2 comma 3. Check P. 800 megahertz to 2,5 gigahertz. Um, these commas could be periods. It could be 2.5 gigahertz instead of 2,5 gigahertz, but they are commas here. But some cultures and um, countries use commas instead of periods for certain things. Um, let's see here. The equation is as follows. Where P is the maximum output power rating of the transmitter in watts, according to the transmitter manufacturer, and D is the recommended separation distance in meters. Field strengths from fixed RF transmitters, as determined by an electromagnetic, electromagnetic site survey, should be less than the compliance level in each frequency range. Interference may occur in the vicinity of equipment marked with the following symbol. Uh, it has a wireless symbol here looks like a wireless router symbol so these equations are distance equals one comma two check p so whatever note at 80 megahertz and 800 megahertz the higher frequency range applies and another note is these guidelines may not apply in all situations electromagnetic propagation is affected by absorption and reflection from structures, objects, and people. And if you have any um, education in RF transmission, there will be attenuation and blah, 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 blah. Um, let's see. Field strengths from fixed transmitters, such as base stations for radio, cellular, cordless telephones, and land mobile radios, amateur radio, AM and FM radio broadcasts, and TV broadcasts cannot be predicted. So theoretically, with accuracy. So... Take your chances, and sometimes fields will jump or dip, so things can't be always predicted. Okay, um, the next video, because this one's getting long, the next video will we'll cover the final last page of the English um, section of the directions. And then the next video after that will be this guy here. So, 